Let's throw our hands in the air Woo-hoo. as we soar through the sky. Yatta. We'll catch the sun Woo-hoo. with your hand in mine. And yeah. if we work as a team, everything will be fine. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's care, care of the what now? Let's henshin and start the show. Hello, fellow fairy tale themed panda mascots, and welcome to Cure of the What Now, the only show where we have no idea what the word tropical means. Well, we're also the only show that takes your favorite fairy tales and inserts pandas. Every show can be made better with pandas, you know? Gravity Falls? Pandas. Panda Rick Falls. and Morty? Pandas. Rick and Panda. Rick and Panda. Uh, let's see, how many others can we do? Uh, Jurassic One Piece? Panda. Jurassic. Not Panda Park? No. <laughs> Don't be stupid. <laughs> uh, Terminator, Terminator Pandavation. I don't know. That's a playoff of Salvation. Anyways. Anyway, my name is Kat, and I'm here. I don't have a thing that I am this week because I didn't think of one and I don't feel like it. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> I'm the co-host Joel, a relative newbie to Shoujo. And oh, I- crap. I'm a Yaranada. That's what I am because I didn't <laughs> want to. You didn't, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am uh, an extra in the local uh, college's uh, film filming of a, of a new film, but I'm waving my arms around a lot, trying to get attention. I ruin every shot that I'm in. Are you just like a wacky inflatable tube dude? Yeah, that's. I'm trying to be one of those in the flesh, so which is made out of blood, as we all know. Everything is made of blood. Even this mermaid is made out of blood. I love it when you bring up our bizarre inside jokes on the podcast, because then I have to have a moment of, do I explain this or do I just leave it? And it's always funnier just to leave it. Yes. Just know that every body part is made out of blood, even the bones. That's the important part of this segment that has been a doctor segment. Uh, (laughs) One of these days we'll have a special guest on who's actually a certified doctor. Uh, a physician who could tell us. Do we know any of those who are also into Precure? I have no idea. So anyways, the lead in discussion. Now, I think if we are technically alternating, I think it's uh, Kat's turn. But uh, before the podcast, I was like, do you have any ideas? Because I have an idea. And she went, well, if you have an idea, go with it. Because I haven't fully cemented mine yet. So this episode has uh, filming involved and so my thought is what kind of genre do you think each of the tropical club enjoy and i was kind of thinking what kind would they direct or act in but i mean not all of them feel like actors and directors so maybe just what time what do they watch in their free time minatsu would never be able to choose just one because she's got wildly untreated adhd (laughs) and honestly same i feel that but i do think that she would be fun in like cheesy b horror movies Okay, I like it. You know? So I was thinking anytime we come up with these questions, if it's a question about all the girls, maybe one of us should just talk and go through the list, and then the other one can go through their list. Does that make sense to you? Sure, I I try to alternate so that we're not each talking for a long time, but whatever you want, man. Okay, we can alternate, but I would like to hear you come pitch one for each of the girls. Uh, if I say Songo, you can't just be like, I, Songo's already been spoken. Not Kat Songo. You and I have two alternate universe versions of these characters. But you are, of course, the host, so if you want to speed this section up, we can do that as well. Minatsu watches kaiju movies, and she loses her <laughs> mind, and she's always like, and then the monster was like, kaboom! Now, is, is kaiju its own genre? Uh, I mean, I guess so. I don't know what other genre it would fall into. Like, I think monster movie has to be its own genre. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's there's monster movies with, like, Dracula or Frankenstein or whatever, and those aren't kaiju. So kaiju is like a specific movie kind of thing. And I'm sure there's kaiju purists that are like, it has to come from Japan. And then there's other people that are like, Pacific Rim is kaiju. And so, it, you know. Do you want to know something hilarious and off topic? Sure. So I guess Ultraman, like Toei, has been fighting for years to keep foreign interests out of it. Okay. But Marvel must have the distribution rights because someone was like, Marvel's Ultraman is finally fighting his Mecha Godzilla, And everyone on Twitter was mad. They were like, <laughs> what the heck do you mean Marvel's Ultraman? Marvel has some weird stuff, man. I mean, they had a... I mean, I guess those are technically both Hasbro, but there's a comic with a crossover between My Little Pony and Transformers. And if you want to talk about two genres that are wildly different from each other, 
I would pick those two, you know? Like, they're both brightly colored, and they're both marketed to younger audiences, but They're just... both about friendship, and they're both designed to sell toys. They're basically the same series. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess <laughs> I've never really thought about that. Line in the sand. No, going back to the discussion question for this week, though, I can't decide who is more likely to be into romance movies, Meanery or Songo. Okay. Mi- mi- something about Minori just really screams secretly reads romance <laughs> to me. And it's not even a secret. Like she wrote that romance about the girl and the mermaid seeking out all the fruits. They were and- just pals being gals. <laughs> were they? <laughs> no, I'm, I I absolutely agree. I'm and just saying. And she was really into The Little Mermaid, which is a famous romance, although... It doesn't end super well. So yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe she likes like the sappy notebook style movies. Okay. She always sits there watching them and she goes, this would have been better if there were more fruits in it. <laughs> <laughs> she is writing a, and producing a movie that is just a uh, fruit ninja live action and that's it. And she's just chopping fruits left and right. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Absolutely. And I know I said we were going to alternate, but like Asuka is absolutely martial arts films. Oh yeah. Martial arts, maybe sports films would be another great one, I think for her. No, she hates teams. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. What if it was like a, uh, like a Rocky situation, you know, like a single individual working their way up in the in the tournament or something like that. But yeah, maybe she wouldn't like uh, like a soccer or a, a football movie. Remember the Giants type of thing. Okay, so you are coming up with all sorts of good ideas. And as always, whenever I have a, a, a discussion question, I never think of my own answers. I only just go, this is an interesting question. We should discuss it. I kind of like Minori. No. I like Songo wanting to be the main detective in like a James Bond or a detective oh, story. Oh, imagine her dressed in the old timey detective yes. hat and coat. That's so cute. So I think that's that's what I'm going to go with with Songo. And I'm going to put Minori as probably fantasy, but it's even funnier to imagine like sci-fi. Like she she likes going into space and she likes the Star Trek and she has like the deep wiki knowledge. She knows, you know, uh, that 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 character in the second game and that character in the fourth game, they have the same name, but they're not the same character. One of them is actually the descendant of the other one because time travel's involved and everyone's like, Minori, please calm down. And once she gets rolling on her topic, she she opens up and she won't stop talking. I just realized Minori is the perfect uh, match for a good friend of ours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could see that. I could yeah, definitely I, see I that. I think if he ends up watching this season, she's going to be his favorite. <laughs> uh, okay, so for Asuka, I'm just going to... this. I, I can't justify it, but I just want to try to pick a bunch of different genres. Uh, so for my pick for Asuka, I think that she would want to star as the... Uh, the um, what's it called? Uh, the survivor in a like a zombie movie. She's the one who makes it to the end. And, uh, you know, she she fights off the zombies with like a hatchet or whatever. Imagine Asuka with a chainsaw just cackling. Yeah, exactly. Imagine her chasing Laura with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, absolutely. Now, you haven't given your way in on what kind of movie Laura would want to be in or watch in her free time. Laura's not a precure. No, I, a I know she, she counts as part of the team. It's just, it's funny to me as an ongoing joke to pretend that Laura isn't part of the team <laughs> <laughs> she steals the motivation power back by pressing a button she works so hard okay how about this <laughs> laura's favorite movie or type of movie is a biopic about her she wants yep. a story that's just about her yep yep imagine she she does that talking to the camera like she's on the office thing yeah uh but there's no camera oh she just does it in real life type of thing the only one who comments on it is asuka and everyone else is like no laura's just doing her documentary (laughs) i'm gonna give you a chance because i there's a i think there's a perfect movie genre that fits in with your headcanon i want to see if you come up with it so what type of movie are you putting laura in Now now there's too much pressure and I I can't okay. think of any genres. <laughs> heist movie. Heist <laughs> movie. A heist against the IRS. She's stealing all of the tax money back and she is leaving. Uh no, I don't really I don't have much of a This isn't a genre. But Laura in National Treasure. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. Now, see, I actually, I honestly, now I'm thinking about it, I don't actually have much of a read on Laura's character. She's kind of like a self-centered sassy girl, but I don't really know if there's like a movie that really necessarily fits with that. I gotta be honest, when I was trying to think, like, romance, I was like, one of the girls has got to, statistically speaking, be into romance movies, and I think I just kind of put her into that, but I, re I really don't know. Maybe she likes movies where there's, like, a, a non-human creature that, through the power of friendship, ends up joining the, 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 the humans, and she really likes those movies, but it's like a guilty pleasure for obvious reasons, so she never lets on to the fact that she likes these movies. And obviously, Karurun exclusively watches March of the Penguins. <laughs> Karurun dreams about being the leopard seal that comes up from under the ice to devour them. Oh my god. That is perfect. So before we get into our succinct summary for this episode, we have to ask the question we ask every week. Does the opening Tropical Rouge, Viva Spark, Precure, I got that name wrong, still slap? No, Viva Spark, Tropical Rouge, Precure. I got it Pre backwards. Right. But we give thanks and praise to Viva Spark, Tropical Rouge, uh, Pretty Cure. It is right to give thanks and praise. This is such a great song, and it's finally gotten to the point where it's now stuck in my head. Before, I would listen to it and be like, oh, that's pretty good. But then a couple of days later, I would have kind of forgotten the tune a little bit. But now it's gotten to the point that we've listened to it so much that it rattles around in there rent-free. So that's just something to uh, to point out. And that's it. You want me to give the succinct summary? I would love for you to give the succinct summary. <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt like there should be a discussion, but this is our ninth episode discussing how much we like the opening. We so. might we might discontinue this bit after episode ten. That seems like a good a good landmark. Uh, if you don't want us to discontinue the bit, then you know where to find us. <laughs> Absolutely. So. The succinct summary is that the school that all these girls are going to is going to be used uh, to film a, a film, and the girls are really excited. They get to be extras. Well, some of them are excited. Some of them are not, but they end up kind of volunteering to help on set. They meet the main actress who has traditionally been playing uh, the protagonist, like the good characters, but in this movie, she's going to be kind of a mean bully, and she can't quite find that inside of her but the other girls befriend her and they help cheer her up there's a little side episode not episode a little side part where Songo is dressing up as a mascot to help sell makeup for our, uh, for her mom's shop and then that encourages the girl whose name i think was yuri or maybe yuna to uh be able to act uh, the villain as part and that's basically it and the fight was nothing to write home about yeah, the fight was very kind of, I mean, there was a cool moment where Songo had a plan. Yes, and, that's and true. And she got to be the one. And there was a lot of good Songo stuff in this yeah. episode. So we've talked before about how we think one of the more hidden themes of this season is change. In it's becoming a new person. So whether you do that via makeup or you do it by literally henching into a more powerful superhero version of yourself... Songo at the beginning of the series was very shy and reserved and held back. And now she is willing to try things that she nev never would have done before. So her mom has this new panda head mascot costume that she's going to wear to promote their new makeup. And Songo says, no, I'll do it. I I'm trying new things. And she goes out there and she really goes for it. And everybody's very impressed with her. That actually is a standout scene for me in this episode. Like, I think that's my favorite scene. It's not necessarily for Songo putting on the mask, though that's pretty good, but she puts on the mask and she's she's trying to be a little bit more outgoing. And this, this actress lady, Yuna Yamabe, uh, she's watching and she comments that she thought that Songo was also this kind of withdrawn person who doesn't really, like, put herself out there. That's, that's kind of Yuna's thing. And the other girls are picking up, like, boxes of makeup and going out to, to help with the sales or whatever. And Monatsu comes in first, and she's all like, I need another box, thanks! And she's all excited. And then uh, Asuka and Minori also come in and talk to Yuna while they're moving boxes. And Asuka says, Monatsu's always racing toward what she wants to do or become, and we're being pulled along, which is perfect for Asuka, because she seems like the least willing to do things, but Monatsu just keeps dragging her into stuff. And then Minori goes, you know, before we knew it, we took a step forward. 
And so, yeah, th that was just a really good scene. And I also just kind of, there's something about the way it was shot, like having them explain how cool Minatsu is while also still just doing this job in the background. I, something about it. I liked it. Well, and I liked it too, because you left Minatsu's part of the conversation out, but Minatsu... Sorry, let me back up. Songo's mom is talking about how different Songo used to be. And Manatsu goes, yeah, Songo's been changing. Mm -hmm. um, and then they kind of follow up. But it's it's cool to see what an immediate effect Manatsu has had on these other characters. <laughs> For sure. Um, I do wish that the, the makeup thing came into it a little bit more. And it doesn't seem to. And that's fine. Like, I wasn't attached to it. But like with Healing Good, if you're going to have doctors be your thing, then you should do more doctoring. If you're yeah. going to have makeup be your thing, you should wear more makeup. Yeah, well, and I mean, I feel like the Tropical Rouge Precure show is more about the tropical energy, which is fine, but they made such a big deal about the special lipstick in the first episode, and Laura, uh, you know, she kind of seemed to be contemplative after she got the her own lipstick or whatever. Well, and Manatsu said to every character... Like, build your confidence through makeup. Mm. But we have yet to see her be put in another situation where she's like, I need confidence. Better do my lipstick. Yeah. Well, and I get the... I, I know that it's... When you're animating, it's easier to keep the characters in the same outfits. And lots of shows have made fun of that where they open up the thing and it's just 15 copies of the same outfit. But if Songo is the kind of fashionista-ish one, I would love for her every once in a while just start an episode with her coming to school in a slightly different outfit. It doesn't even have to be a Songo-centered uh, episode, but just something like, oh, I thought of this new dress, how does it look? And the other girls could be like, woo! And then she changes back into her normal outfit because the episode takes place the next day or something. Like, I think that'd be cool. But we unfortunately haven't gotten it nine episodes in. Maybe we will as we go forward. Yeah, the trouble with a weekly show is that you can't really put the characters in new outfits very often because then you have to animate the new outfit. Yeah, that's it's it's yeah, it's the budget constraints rather than budget and time constraints rather than the realisticness of it kind of a thing. How did you like this episode? I liked it. It was a solid episode, I mm -hmm. think. Someone on Twitter was talking about how this show doesn't really seem to have a plot yet, or nope. it's not plot driven. It's more character driven. And that's good. I'm enjoying it. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what we're working toward, but they're all having a good time and that makes me happy. So while I really liked the more plot centric seasons like Kira Kira, uh, I'm enjoying this one a lot. I think the humor is top notch. I like all of the characters, which hardly ever happens. Like there's always that one team member that you're like, uh, but no, they're all, they're all good. See, I would say that so far I haven't seen much from Songo. Asuka has her relationship both with uh, being pulled around by Minatsu and also her I don't put up with your shit with Laura, so she has moments. Minatsu is just a ball of energy, and Papaya is excellent even if Minori's character doesn't always uh, completely like blow me out of the water. But Songo was a little bit like, come on girl, you can do it. And she got a moment to shine in this episode, but I wish that she had shown even brighter. Uh, but... I'm guessing we will get more Songo episodes in the future. We're still learning about the characters and all that other good stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Now, I did notice in my own uh, contemplations that we had the first five episodes, because you had the one with Minatsu and Laura, but you had the first five episodes was meeting the four members of the team. Episode six was the club forming around them and actually them deciding what they're going to do with their after-school time. But then the next three episodes, seven, eight, nine, you got an episode where Minori was really good at uh, uh, thinking because she reads so many books and she's the smart one. You got an episode that was about Asuka where she mentioned her family and cooking and she taught the other girls how to make bento boxes. And then episode nine, you get Songo, uh, her mom's uh, uh, makeup store is helping the actress, and also Songo's the one who's highlighted as putting on the Sindri mask and also the one who is able to fight the uh, the bad guys. He he he, you said, said Sindri. Sindri, that's a One Piece character. Cindy, short for Cinderella. Again, why a panda mask? Anyways, it doesn't matter. So obviously next episode will be Minatsu. And at the end of this episode, there was a little sting that the bad guys have a new, more powerful version of the Yarn Da. So 
it makes sense that the team leader and kind of the one who has the most tropical energy would get the episode where the bad guys kick it up a notch, but I'm really wondering if they're going to get uh, their team attack or their uh, maybe some like tropical energy type power up where they glow or something. Uh, might be a little bit too early for that, but at the same time, who knows? Maybe the show is going to surprise us. I think we've got to get their team attack at this point because th- that seems like the natural progression and they usually get the first team attack pretty early on, I'd say, once you've gotten the introduction of all the people and you've gotten some of their character out of the way so it seems like we're there i really am interested in the fact that the the yarn da are already getting part two like sure. their their mega version so i'm i'm wondering if this season is going to give us a lot of different kinds of bad guys and escalations of the bad guys yeah because it seems like a lot of the other seasons that we've watched it was basically, there was only the mid-season power-up for the the buffoons. There was the red nose and the blue nose. And for Heart Catch, they had the basic, you know, desert chains. And then they had the, um, the dark crystals that they used. And that was basically it. But I also remember, I don't know if I have the exact episode numbers down, but I believe Heal and Good had, like, the Biogens, the the Ultra Biogens, the Mega Biogens. Like, they had quite a few evolutions in that season as well. So maybe that's just going to be the new formula. Instead of half the season is one set of bad guys, the next half is another form of, not bad guys, minions. Maybe they'll do every 10 episodes they get an upgrade and there's like five stages throughout the season. Yeah, could be. Absolutely. I do want to point out, I'm very proud of my very little limited Japanese vocabulary, the new Yarane Daws are going to be called Zenzen Yarane Da. As we discussed in an earlier episode, Yarane Da means basically like, I don't want to do it, but Zenzen means never, so it's like, I never want to do anything, and it's an even more unmotivated power. I really, these things that don't want to do it, how are they even fighting? <laughs> They will fight today for the ability to not fight for the rest of their lives as they sit back sipping martinis or whatever at the beach. I guess pina coladas would be the most yeah, appropriate. or margaritas. Martinis are like James Bond fancy man drinks. Listen, I don't personally drink, but yeah, my brain. I think I was going for margaritas and my brain was like, oh, I see M-A-R. Did you mean martini? <laughs> no, I didn't. Thanks, brain. Thanks, Clippy. <laughs> Clippy lives on in my heart at all times. Speaking of living on in my heart at all times, uh, Pete the Triceratops, he had some family business to attend to, and so it's nothing major, uh, but he just needed to be there for them, and we, of course, understood, and we we allowed him, uh, you know, time away from the podcast. Yes, and I swear I did not murder Pete off mic when, <laughs> when Joel wasn't looking. Yeah, he went to the farm. <laughs> if Pete had been murdered or went missing, I would be too distraught to do an episode. I'd be in tears and be like, and then papaya, she shot the laser. No, no, in, the, in this uh, hypothetical situation, he would be gone, and I would tell you he went to visit family. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> but Anyways. because he's a pillow, you can turn around and see that he's he's right there. No, he's actually. visiting family. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you live in this weird world of yours inside your head where you make up all of these things. <laughs> anyway, the episode. I believe you had one other uh, thing written down for favorite quotes. Yes. I could not remember the context, but if no, you do. I think, yeah, they were taught, someone, oh, Songo put on the Cindy mask and she passed out because it was too hot. She was pushing herself too hard. So the next scene is, you know, kind of her with an ice pack on her head. And they're like, yeah, don't push yourself too hard. And Asuka goes, being reckless is Minatsu's job. And Minatsu does the, I call it the gorilla snort where her nostrils get really big and like puff comes out of it. And she's just like, Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. And so Manatsu doesn't even have enough brains to realize that she's being reckless. That's a bad thing in most situations. <laughs> it just reminds me of that quote that Manatsu is pure power and that uh, she doesn't get any ab- additional abilities when she transforms into Kira Summer. She's just always like that. So going back to that team attack, we got the Karuru and Rocket teased in whichever episode that was, uh, seven, I think. Do you think they're going to do something like that? Or what do you think the the attack's going to look like? Hmm. I mean, 
It's hard with these shows because sometimes the openings are spoilers and sometimes stuff in the openings never happens in the actual show. Uh But in the opening, they summon like a giant sunbird that flies into (laughs) the bad guys and blows them up. I like that because... None of the the gir- the thing that links the girls together are makeup and tropical energy, and as we already discussed, more tropical energy than the makeup stuff. But I can't think of a team attack that would involve them like what they apply each other's makeups like a blush or something, and then they look prettier. And then they I I don't. So I'm thinking something rainbow or sun related, and maybe that bird will end up being the spirit of summer or something like that, or the spirit of tropical energy. Okay, so you just gave me an idea that I think is going to blow your mind. Okay, you got a Jimmy Neutron bl- brain blast. If Laura eventually becomes the mid-season bonus cure, uh huh. Imagine her transformation. Being all of them applying her makeup. Oh my god. Lips, cheeks. Ah, that's so good. And she's like shocked every time and it's a different girl for each thing. <laughs> yes, and that would also show that like they're helping her and maybe she accepts being part of the team and stuff like that. Oh, that'd be so good. In Kira Kira, the different girls who got their transformations always had a food item That was important and ended up being thematically tied to their transformation. Could you see a particular item being special to Laura and transforming into her transformation item? Maybe the tropical pot? Is that what it's called? Yeah, uh, I believe it's the 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 mermaid mermaid pot. pot. (laughs) I wanted to call it the heart pot, but that's heart catch. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, I I hope that she gets, like, a. I I hope that maybe they find out what her birthday is. And maybe they all, like, pitch in, they buy her something kind of, like, small and simple. But she actually has a moment of, like, oh, they they like me. Or maybe it'll be a comment she made offhandedly, and she didn't think they were listening, but then they bought her a gift that, you know? And so I'm just expecting, like, a form of gratitude, and then maybe this... Maybe it's like a necklace with like a conch shell on it or something. And maybe that will be like something that she holds or uses in the transformation. That'd okay. be really cool. Yeah, I, w- I would like that a lot. A uh, Karurun could be her transformation item. She just puts <laughs> him on like a hat. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. The pen she uses to falsify documents. <laughs> for the yes! IRS. That's a lucky pen right there. So long as you sign your documents with that, you'll never uh, have troubles again. I, yeah, so we'll just have to see what happens. Do you think Laura's going to get legs? Do you think she's going to be able to transform? Like, I, obviously- I can't imagine her wanting to be a human. Okay. Like, if she gets legs, it will probably be lampshaded with something like, oh, gross, I'm a person now. <laughs> um, but I would prefer to see her stay a mermaid, even if she gets the mid-season. How is she going to move around? Is she just going to, like, jump with powerful tail kicks, basically? Or she'll fly. Okay, she can swim through the air as if... Okay, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you. Sure. Did we eat our broccoli this week? You know, let me double check what the what the ninth episode of. I think this is the episode where uh, uh, Nagisa doesn't feed her her uh, fairy. I was gonna say rodent. You remembered <laughs> the right word. Uh, oh, and then the vice principal takes the cell phone, and then they get attacked by the most horrifying monster. Not horrifying, that's the wrong word. But they, the the bad guy brings one of those anatomical um, statues, mannequins, to life. And it's not played for, like, it's not, there's not, like, blood seeping under the ground. It's not that scary. But it is, like, attack on Titan level, like, giant anatomical By model. the end of the episode, it is, but... Also, they give no forewarning. In most episodes, you know, it'll show the bad guy, like, I, I always use the vacuum cleaner episode. Bassard goes to a store, and he sees a vacuum, and he's told, this vacuum is very powerful, and he goes, oh, I see. And then you get, like, a little animation, and then the vacuum comes to life, and it turns into, like, an elephant thing or whatever the heck is going on. So you are told that the monster is coming. But this episode of Futari Wa, there's no uh, explanation given. You hear a sound, and you're like, oh, that that might be... um. Doc and Drago, Geki Drago, or whatever his name is. And then the vice principal turns a corner, and there's just this thing that has flesh on one half and just, like, muscle on the other half. And I I legitimately went, ah! (laughs) I was just surprised. So that was episode nine of Futariwa. Okay, and then you watched more Kira Kira? 
Did I? Maybe? I don't know if I did. Oh, yeah. I think you did. They, they, they decorated the patissier, and uh, Kira Macaron could make the icing turn into whatever shape she wanted, and, and Owie is, is very strong. She throws things like a champ. <laughs> she throws things, and uh, Himarin is useless, but at least um, Akira was there. Akira to- was there to save the day. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm still waiting for the hot transfer student. I know it took a while for him to show up, but right now the bad guys are meh. And I'm hoping that the same thing happens in Tropical Rouge, that eventually we get to some point where there's a more plotually interesting villain rather than Crab with abs who's like, I guess I'll create a bad guy. Yeah, I mean, watch this space. You'll notice that all of the evil fairies have uh, weird belts with, like, dark stars on them. Yes. I wonder what that could be about. <laughs> Absolutely. Do we have any tweets in a bottle this we episode? We do have some tweets in a bottle, kind of. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an asterisk on that, and I'm going to admit that I'm stealing these from the greater Twitterverse because nobody sent us any direct messages. But if you want to send us direct messages, you can. Could it be that you have been inspired by your hero, Laura, the tax evader? You have decided that, you know what? Life of crime is actually pretty cool. Laura's taught me that. Taxation is theft, right? That's what Laura says. But Laura also says theft is okay for her. Hmm. Burgers for me, but not for thee. We uh we have we haven't watched that much Tokusatsu, but we saw an image that's from oh, do you even remember what season that is that has Momotaro? Oh, that's uh Deno. It is? Pretty sure. Okay. We might be wrong, but uh yeah, it might be Deno. There's a season of Common Rider or Sentai? No, it's Common Rider. That has these four monsters monster looking guys that end up being allies i think to the heroes and we saw a post that was one of them was like it's okay to rely on your friends and and then another one's like being honest they're being true to your feelings is is okay and then the third one is just it's okay to commit murder sometimes and then the fourth one is something like you know always help your friends and I think that's Laura. I think if you had a picture of Minatsu, she'd be like, always remember to Tropica shine. And Minora is like, reading his power. And Laura's like, commit arson. And then Asuka <laughs> is like, working on a team can be a lot of fun. <laughs> this is after her transformation, after she gets over her backstory. Absolutely. Also, I Googled it because I hate to be wrong. He is from Deno. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank goodness for good buddy Trey, who talks about that show so much that it's now burned into my brain. Our first tweet in a bottle comes from at the Ivan Hobe, who I talk to a lot about Precure on Twitter. Um, he writes about Precure all the time. You've shouted him out before. Yeah, I, I'm shouting him out again. Okay. Because he has a really good blog and a really good article about Yes Precure 5, so you should read it. Anyway, he said something about how Cure Papaya was his favorite character, and I was like, you know... I was not expecting to like Cure Papaya because she's the res- shy reserve type, but they've put a lot more character into her than most shy characters get. And he replied, yeah, it's kind of amazing how they've managed to add a lot to her characterization, even if she hasn't had a lot of focus. The fact that she's the shy type, but also fills the powerhouse role along with Flamingo is just the cherry on top. I don't know if I'm just kind of a dingus or what, but I somehow, it never clicked for me that she's one of like the strong, like kicky characters, but she is. She's always up in there kicking the bad guy. Oh, really? Uh Uh-huh. I've I've completely not noticed that. Yeah, after Ivanhoe pointed it out, I uh, was paying attention to this episode and saw it. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Are you liking Cure Papaya more than you thought you would? Yes, as a, I think I said it even this episode, but just to reiterate, Minori in her, as Minori, she's okay, I like her, but I don't love her, but when she becomes Papaya, she's so cute, especially since she's always, like, kind of tripping, <laughs> and, like, when she does the victory <laughs> pose, and then there's the explosion, she almost gets knocked over, like, that's hilarious. You just need that one trait to give them a little something extra. Yes, absolutely. Then we've got a thought from at Hanakatoba who says that Precure is at its best when it's comedy-centric and Tropical Rouge is no stranger to it. It has a wildly eccentric Precure who carries so much personality in the show, and it also has heartwarming moments. I agree. I think Precure is funny, and I think this show is one of the funnier seasons. 
I think Precure works really well when it does funny, but I think it also does uh, uh, heartfelt really well too, uh, with you know family and friends and even some of the epi- some of the episodes briefly touch on loss, for example. But I like one of my favorite scenes from Star Twinkle is near the end, and it's the 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 character has kind of lost her oomph I guess that's not the right word but my brain is stupid but it was it was touching I was like am I, am I gonna cry to date no precure has made me cry but that's the closest I've gotten and it, it there was no humor in that scene that was just arrow to the heart but it's hard to do arrow to the heart at the beginning of the series beginning should start out light uh comedic it should be about their relationships with each other they should be like sisters who get along most of the time but every once in a while there's a little bit of dumb friction like i don't know asuka and laura not necessarily seeing eye to eye all the time and then near the end it should have it should use those foundations for uh, a dramatic punch to the stomach Absolutely. but not friends are moving away from each other no it should be just a momentary setback and they should overcome it with the power of friendship and you rainbows. can kill fua but don't you dare make lala move away forever <laughs> please don't kill fua <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Fua is gone. Fua is dead. Sorry, that's that's me quoting our giant mega precure episode. One more tweet in a bottle I wanted to address. I don't know if you had any. Is from at Ultra Heroin Fan. The characters are fun to watch, including the villains, which get along pretty well to each other, which is rare in precure. Oh, except for Butler, because he is sus. Now, I chose that one because unless you have any, it felt like a good place to segue into crack theories. But yeah, the butler is sus as heck. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I I forgot to prepare any crack theories, but the butler... I've got one. The butler, we... I don't know if we've actually seen any of the uh, the generals interacting with the Witch of Delays except for the butler. So when the butler's like, hey, look, she gave us this extra powerful Yara Neda, are we sure the Witch of Delays created that, or is the butler the mastermind behind it all? So here's my theory. Okay. The reason the Witch of Delays never eats or does anything is because the Witch of Delays is actually a mech with some rudimentary Uh, AI, and the butler will eventually climb inside this giant mech witch and pilot her. Okay, that's a great crack theory. Second kind of related crack theory. The butler is the true evil villain, which I think is the heart of your uh, theory as well. And he is a dragon that has been sealed inside of a seahorse body. So once he collects all seven gems, he will take on his true form and be this giant 50-foot tall monster. And he will fight Godzilla, who will be confirmed as a canon precure. And, and that, that has been your final thought. Outro goes here. Don't forget to tropical screonk! Ha ha! What a great episode of King of the What Now, your One Piece podcast that started from the very beginning and stars these two doofuses. If you want to follow us on social media, Twitter is the best place to do that. I am at K-O-T-W-N underscore pod. And I am at Pirate Ghost Host. Absolutely, yes. We share all sorts of thoughts on there, some related to the podcast, some related to other things. But you can also reach us through email at kingofthewhatpod at gmail.com, or you can also find us on Patreon. We would love some subscribers or supporters, whatever the technical term is. Patrons. Patrons. So fancy and grown up. Uh, And you can find that at patreon.com slash king of the what pod you can find all sorts of things like bonus episodes and you get to see the full cold open candidates not just the ones that make it into the episode maybe someday if i learn to draw i'll put stuff up there we're always looking for suggestions and feedback and speaking of which please take a moment to rate and review our podcast wherever you get us from so itunes spotify scrivener that's for writing but wherever you listen to our podcast take Take a moment to leave a review. It helps other people find us. We are so grateful to all of our listeners, and we couldn't do this without you. Absolutely. Word of mouth is super powerful, so if you have a friend who likes One Piece and they haven't heard of us, just direct them to the latest episode. And if they hate us, they can tell us why. And if there's an actionable item, we'll try to please you. That's how this works. 
Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.